We have Julie here from U.S. Fish and Wildlife. It's been a year since we spoke with you. How are things going? Good. <laughs> so the snakeheads now are uh, pretty established in the river. Any updates in the last year? Uh, they've changed their range. They've increased their range a little bit, but not incredibly. Um, we found some on the eastern shore of Maryland, and so eastern shore of the, the Chesapeake Bay. And we're a little bit concerned about where they're coming from. We, are, we don't know if they're crossing the bay or if people are stalking them. Um, we found them in the chop tank now. So. The eradication, anything new besides just people hooking them and killing them? We have uh, some researchers that are interested in doing um, some using sonic, um, basically acoustics, to try to uh, exclude the swim bladder of carp in the Mississippi drainage. So they're interested in trying to do that here with snakeheads. But they have to do a lot of experimentation before we'll get there with that. So I always make an analogy that pulling a dandelion out of your like front yard, trying to eradicate all dandelions is kind of pointless. Is right. just pulling one snakehead out really going to do anything? Or a couple hundred a year by anglers? Right, probably not anglers if they're if we have a commercial fishery for them um, we know that commercial fishing can sometimes put a huge um, damper on a population and decrease it but uh, anglers probably aren't gonna make a huge decline in the species so. for the benefit of anglers have you been able to dissect any and tell us what they mostly eat so we know what kind of flies to throw at them <laughs> bait fish crustaceans mice you yeah. hear a lot that they like frogs. We've heard that they like frogs. We've never found a frog in their belly, but we found eels. Okay. Um, so that might be something new to try. Excellent. And mostly otherwise mummy chogs and you know whatever little soft fish there are. Do you know the largest that these fish can grow in the Potomac River? Oh, that's a good question. I think uh, around 36 inches is, is pretty much the max that we've seen. What would you guesstimate a weight of a 36 inch snake? Oh gosh, I don't know. Do you have any ideas? I don't know. I didn't have a scale when I caught mine last year. Mine was 34 inches and yeah. pretty heavy. I don't know. I mean, they get really fat. If you look at this one over here, the if they are in breeding condition, females can get really fat in the summer. So I guess they can get up to 15 pounds. Wow. And we have one here on ice. We got a three, three foot one. So this looks like a juvenile. How old do you think this one would be? Um, that one is probably two, possibly three, but um, they grow really fast. It's amazing, um, the growth rate, and especially if they're in some uh, location where there's a lot of food. Do you know why people keep using the same stock footage for northern snakeheads that are wrong after every article? There's two internet pictures if you Google snakehead, and it's always a desiccated fish, and then one that's not even a northern snakehead with the mouth open. Oh, geez. And they're no. always saying, these are northern snakeheads. And it's like, no, no, man, that's... Oh, I hope not, because, yeah. you know, we get a lot of reports of snakeheads in new locations, and we always ask them to take good pictures, take, uh, keep the fish if they can. If, it, if it's a new location, like a new tributary or something that it's never been found in before, we really want people to um, report that so that we know where they're spreading to. We try to get out as soon as we can and electrofish in the area and see if we can get any more. Best way to kill them, just cut the head off? Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty bloody, but if you just remove their, some people say remove their gills, I don't think that really um, kills them right away. I think it yeah. will eventually kill them. But... It takes about seven hits with a rock to kill one. Oh, really? Yeah, their head is pretty pretty bony. But yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest challenge that we have is getting gas fishermen to kill because bass fishermen do not like to get their boats dirty. Right. So speaking of the bass fishermen, everyone thinks, oh, the snakeheads are going to eat everything in the river, but, and they call them invasive. How is the largemouth bass, the smallmouth bass, why are those not considered invasive, even though they are non-native introduced? I think just because they've been around so long, the largemouth bass in the lower Potomac have been established there for practically 100 years, okay. and they were stocked by government officials. <laughs> so. Um, it's some, and it's something that they consider them naturalized fish. So. Any particular places that are better for electroshocking if anglers want to go target snakeheads? Um, we always
always find a lot around Doe Creek and Little Honey Hunting Creek, and that's pretty much on the, the west side. Um, and I'm trying to think of a place on the east side, uh, Mata Woman is always a good spot. So those are the places that we find a lot. Um, I don't know how they are for fishing. What about times of year? They seem to be dormant in the winter, and this year they showed up in March. Last year we didn't see one until the 26th of April. Yeah, I think that's just temperature, and when they come up and start um, getting into breeding condition, getting a lot of the females will um, migrate upstream, we think. From our tagging data, we figured out that a lot of them during high flows will go upstream. All the ones we sampled last year were all females up here at Chainbridge and all stomachs empty. So they're definitely not eating during. So when people catch one up here, it's either out of aggression or they're snagging them, which is pretty easy to do. Yeah. And then just saying, hey, I, I caught a snakehead. Yeah, it's funny. They they seem like in high flow years, they come up here a lot more. But I don't know, have you seen any up in this region? Not in three year? weeks, but the water's yeah. at 3.3 feet right now. It's so, so low. Yeah, it's low and clear. Right. Um, I think that. Um, the, we think that in the winter they congregate and go down into the mud because a lot of times we find um, a large number of them all in one area. And we don't know if that's because they like to be together and, or if they just find a good spot and um, you know all the other snake heads think it's a good spot too. And do they really spawn and protect their young in weed mats and if we throw a lure in there they'll protect them? Yeah. Spike the lure. Oh. Yeah, the only report that we've ever had of anyone being bitten by a snakehead is a kid who reached his hand down to scoop up some of the babies and the mother came over and, and grabbed his arm awesome. and he had a pretty good abrasion it was, it was yeah, pretty those bad. Teeth look like cat claws. They're yeah. like clear and sharp. That's crazy but um, otherwise we've never had any other reports of anyone being bit um, despite the media's uh, scare tactics. Good old media. <laughs> Alright, so where can we find you on the internet? Um, it's, so it's www.fws.gov and if you go to the offices, go to the Maryland Fishery Resource Office. Very cool. Thanks so much and I guess we'll catch up with you next year. Alright, thanks, thanks so much. much.